me and my cousins bring new people into the family we always tell them our ghost stories so i'm freaking glad i can share that with you today when i was in fifth grade we moved to germany for a year because my stepdad was in the military so it was just me my mom my brother and my stepdad so just the four of us my brother is also five years older than me so when i was in fifth grade he was uh a sophomore i know math also we did not live on base there was this one night where my mom and my stepdad they were out for like some military event like a fancy dinner like a ball or whatever and my brother and me stayed home duh and so my brother had a few friends come over and they really were into techno at the time i was also into techno but they were into hard techno and that shit would freak me to freak out i think now i know that it was anxiety because of like the bass like freaked me out so much but yeah so when my brother's friends came, they were like listening to hard techno and I was like, guys, this is freaking me out a little bit. I think I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna go to sleep. So that's what I did. I think that's like around 10 or 11 that I go upstairs and then they call me down at like midnight or one and they're like, hey, was that you watching us from the stairs? And I was like, huh? Cause I had literally just woken up. And they're like, yeah, there was someone watching us from the stairs and it looked like you, but like we couldn't tell cause there was like a lot of hair in her face. So like, we didn't know was that you. And since I had already had ghost experiences under my belt at that age, I was like, oh yeah, to not freak myself out and to not freak out my brother, I'm gonna say yes. That was me. Yeah, I was watching you. Sorry, I got bored upstairs. The TV shows were lame because cable was whack at the time okay and so they're like oh my god thank god because we were so freaked out ha 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 and then so my, uh, they're like leaving so then my brother's like closing the door behind the last person and he's like hey i know that that wasn't you watching us so you're gonna sleep in my bed that tonight and i was like how do freaky know that so basically i think what was in that house had followed me to the states because i mean that house in germany had so much bad energy it was freaky as fuck like my mom woke up to some type of entity like laying on top of her like watching her go to sleep and it was freaky so fast forward i'm now back in the states i'm in sixth grade i wanted to go to one middle school my mom ends up buying another house that was like out of the district but i like had already started going to this middle school and because i was moving from the military my mom was like um i don't want you to go through all these changes again pobrecita so we're gonna or my dad was like why don't you spend half the time with me and half of the time with your mom so then you can still go to the same middle school and then we don't have to go through all the changes plus i can see you blah blah, blah. and i was like oh my god yeah that'd be like so freaking fun and i think this is too long so you have to go to part two which i never thought i'd be the type of person to say that
talking to the other wing of the house, quickly text the mom, try calling her, and neither mom or dad are picking up the phone. I'm like, what's going on? And then I come back into the kitchen, I'm like sending another text to the mom, and I look up, and there's just a woman standing at, staring at me through the window, like a middle-aged woman just staring at me. And so we look at each other, and she just starts walking away. So I like watch her walk away and at this point I'm like really scared. At this point I'm like running around the house making sure all the windows and doors are locked. I'm so paranoid because I just like don't have a good feeling about it. Basically this woman just like walked onto the street, got into a car and drove away. Still can't get a hold of mom or dad. Still don't know like what is going on. It looks like nobody is home from outside. Like, it looks like there's not a single car in the drive, like, there's not a single car in the driveway, sorry, I, like, can't even get my thoughts straight. So I had to hop on this trend because I could literally make a whole entire series about all the experiences I have had growing up, especially in the house that I grew up in. Um, but I'll start with one really creepy story that literally gave me chills and still freaks me out to this day. Um, when I was younger, my family had Korean exchange students that lived in our house and um, one of the students shared a room with me, so we had a bunk bed and she took the bottom and I took the top. Um, and during this time, my dad had removed all of the doors to all the rooms in our basement because we were getting new carpet. Um, and so I wanted a little bit more privacy. So for Christmas, my grandma gifted me some door beads, but they didn't come to the floor all the way. Uh, they, they were about a foot off of the floor. And my sister Callie would always come in and just steal my clothes, my makeup, whatever she wanted to use. Um, and I was a pretty light sleeper, so she would slide under the door beads to come in in the morning before school and and to not wake me up. Um, well, there was one particular night where my exchange student was visiting her uncle in another state for Thanksgiving, so I was alone in my room. Um, it was nighttime, everybody was in bed, and I it was dark, and I just, I heard my door beads. So I looked over, and I see what looks like my sister, just like her silhouette, and she's got long, um, curly hair, and she was crawling on all fours with her hair and her hair was like hanging in front of her face and she was crawling on all fours sliding under the door beads and I could see the door beads like hitting against her back as she slid under and once she got under she like hurried to the end of my bed where the closet was at the foot of my bed so I was thinking to myself like oh I caught her in the act this time I'm going to totally tell her that I knew she was stealing my clothes. Um, so I snuck to the edge, to the end of the bunk bed. Um, and I just like, wow, like tried to scare her. And when I looked over the end of my bed, there was nobody there. So I just started screaming. And then my sister ended up running down the hall and she came in and turned on my light. And she's like, what, what, what? And I was just like, you have, and I just freaked out and told her what had happened. But that was one time that was super, super creepy. The way that I ran to record this video was so fast. Now, I normally don't make videos, I don't post on TikTok, um, but this was the one. I was like, girl, this is your time. If there's ever a time, this is the time you have to tell your story. Um, I have had paranormal stuff happen to me 
my whole life. Um, definitely more so as I've gotten older. Um, I've had astral projection, what I would consider astral projection, horrible sleep paralysis, crazy dreams, physical encounters with things um, for as long as I can remember up till, I mean, currently. Um, the one story that I want to talk about is when I was 18, I was a park aide at Donner Memorial State Park. Now, most of you know the Donner Party, or if you don't, you know, that they're pretty researchable. Um, and I worked there as a park aide uh, when I turned 18 during the winter time. Now, my dad was also a ranger there at one point prior to me working there. Um, and it's been kind of in my life and I grew up there and it's what the town no is known for. So one day when I was working in this museum, I was by myself. Uh, I worked by myself a lot, especially during in the winter time. It was very sn slow. It was snowing outside. Um, I was getting ready to close up and from the back museum portion I heard what I can only be only describe as um, children giggling uh, now I thought it was weird but I had been going to the back and then kind of coming back up to the front throughout the day and I was like well maybe somebody came in that I didn't see it was time for me to close up anyway so I made my way into the museum to go lock the exit doors in the back and just check and make sure that nobody was in there. As soon as I walked in, the giggling stopped. And in my head, I'm kind of like, well, I'm by my, maybe I'm, I'm just freaking myself out. Maybe there wasn't anything, like it's fine. So I'm making my way through the displays. It's kind of like shaped, it's a big concrete box, no windows already creepy in itself it was built in like the 60s this thing is old um and it's kind of set the displays are set up in like a horseshoe shape so you walk in and then it rounds and then you kind of make your way back out i'm heading down to lock up the back exit towards the back wall and as i'm walking from over my shoulder one of the displays goes off now they're the big put you push the button on the wall and it makes the guy talk and now in my brain i'm like that's weird it's weird it's weird but like, I, I, it's old, the button's broke, like it's fine. I'm like talking myself out of it. I'm like, it's okay, it's fine, everything's fine. Like, don't worry about it, just like lock the door and get the hell out of there. Um, so I kind of write it off. I mean, the clue number two that I probably shouldn't have been in there, right? But I just keep going. So I go to the exit door, lock the exit door, I'm making my way around the U and on the back wall, there is this massive, like life-size display of a covered wagon and then there's a mother and child like up at the top and then there's like two men down below life-size wax mannequins creepy anyway i'm walking around this corner and i'm going around the u and what can i can only describe is like a like a um like a full body like uh like like chill like kind of crawls up my spine i um I don't know what possesses me, but I decide to turn around and check it out. So I look over my shoulder. The mannequins that have always been facing left for the for, for years, since they put them in, they've always faced left, are now facing right. They are facing the opposite direction and they are staring at me in my eyeballs. They are, from this, to this and now looking directly at me the way that I panicked like my heart like is go I can I am like feeling like I'm reliving the whole thing again like the panic I sprinted out of there so fast I, she is not a runner she is not a track star but girl, I booked it I booked it so fast and I ran and I hid behind a table in the back like there's a back office I hid under the desk I called the ranger I had a ranger come and escort me out of the building because I was so terrified. I was so terrified. I cannot convey through the screen how afraid I was. And he comes over, he has to talk me off the ledge. He's like trying to calm me down. And he's telling me, don't worry. Like it does, it does happen to some of us. They like to mess with us sometimes. It's okay. Excuse me, sir. They like to mess with us. Like, <laughs> like, shouldn't have somebody told me prior to being hired? Shouldn't have been written in my contract? Like, the spirits, the lingering spirits of the, of the Donner Party, like, to mess with the staff. No biggie, it's fine. Anyway, I decide to go home and I decide to talk to my dad about it because my dad, of all people who has worked there for years, you'd think he would tell his daughter 
<laughs> that there were ghosts and spirits or whatever, a presence, where she was working. Because he hadn't told me before. But anyway, I decided to go tell him. I think he's going to laugh at me because I'm obviously I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a dramatic person, but I think he's going to laugh at me and brush it off or whatever. He's very straight laced. He's not normally a, a spiritual or a paranormal person. Oh, no. He says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's happened a couple times. We just it's kind of creepy. Um, We just I just we just don't like to talk about it. I would have liked to talk about I, sir, would have liked to talk about it before I got hired, before I was put in that situation. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> so I do want to preference in saying like, I have the utmost empathy for that, for the Donner party, that situation, like the whole thing. Um, and I'm not trying to make light of, of that situation whatsoever, but I will say that, um, it was, it was traumatizing and it has, and it has stuck with me, it has stuck with me forever. Um, I still think about it to this day. I still continue to have stuff happen. We had stuff happen there because I also worked there for three years. So I just continued to work there. So honestly, that's on me. But like we had stuff like <clears throat> there was a, a false door that housed a projector screen for a video that we shot that would just pop open, just squeak, like it would just pop open. Uh, the projector would just start playing. The giggles came back you know um so anyway it was pretty crazy uh and yeah anyway I just felt like you know people sh should know about that um and if you've watched this seven minute long video this is see this is why I don't make this is why I don't make videos I can't stop talking the ADHD anyway but yeah that's my story okay bye <laughs>
Now, this is kind of where we were validated in the fact that we thought this was a childlike spirit. Um, not only did it play pranks and kind of mess with us like that, but we think that this spells out Anna Bo Anna. Um, and then there's three little stars. You can't really see that one, but there's three little stars underneath it. Um, and this just really confirms that like we were right in assuming that this might be a kid. As mentioned previously, uh, my niece would, in the middle of the night, stand up in her crib and look out over the room and yell things like, no, and stay back. Um, and I will show you guys that right now. taken off of the bread and 
it was placed on the edge of the counter, sitting up, just like a per like a little person with its like little legs crossed. So those are probably like the craziest stories that I have from that house. Like I said before, if you know me, if I know you, you've probably heard these stories because I literally tell them every chance I get.